What's up, everybody? It's your favorite coming out swinging's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Iron Trans Star Blade. It's their take on a masterpiece scaled Star Saber, and I gotta tell you, my impressions right out of the box were pretty impressed. Materials feel good, paint is amazing, etc., etc. But we need to see how it works. We need to see how it holds up, how the build is, etc. First, I want to give a shout out to East Coast Toys. I think this is his personal copy that he sent me to take a look at. So shout out to him. He runs a pretty good spot. He's got pretty good prices. The link is in the description. With that being said, let's get started, but let's start with accessories. He comes with a gun for one, painted beautifully, sculpted beautifully, from head, from top to bottom, like zero complaints from me. You have this handle and you have this handle. Utilizing this handle, you can put it right in the smaller guy's hand. Utilizing this handle, you can slide it right into the larger bot's hand and slide out. So that's a new system and I gotta tell you, I kinda like it. And the gun can store in one of these pegs on the back of the giant robot. He comes with a small sword. We have gold paint here. We have silver paint on the blade. I think we even have red paint on here and then silver paint on the handle. So once again, sculpted beautifully, painted beautifully. That will fit in his hand, but it's definitely a tight fit. Use caution. So you get these components as well, right? Which we're kind of used to at this point. You have this, we have the gold, silver. I think it has red paint on it as well. And then we have the accents there. We have the landing gear, etc. This piece will obviously flip down. Then you can take your blade, which is painted silver and sculpted beautifully. The little notches and stuff looks really good. And just tuck this in there. This square cut out holds that element and then there's a peg and a hole on each side that you can find the corresponding position for. Close that in and then you take this open up the back end, so to speak, and slide this on, and then close this up. And there you have it. And it's pretty impressive. You know, it's a pretty impressive <gasps> sword. And he'll hold that the same way by sliding it down that rail. Now inside of the kind of broad sword spot on his saber is a smaller handle that can flip out so that you could have it as like a single handed weapon instead of a dual handed weapon. But I'll be honest with you, even if you were gonna have him just use it with one hand, it doesn't look as good as the longer handle. And that goes in his hand the same way. He comes with his star saber head. It's sculpted and painted beautifully. Um, the silver and blue on the eyes. I wish the eyes was more of a metallic blue, but it does look good. The gold here and then the silver on the ears, for lack of a better term. Like, it's a really, really, really well sculpted thing. And you get this little fella. And he's got blue and silver paint on the head. He's got gold paint on the chest. He's got white and blue paint on the arms. He's got blue paint on the legs and red paint on the legs. Um, the head is stuck in place. The arms do swivel as do the hips. Pretty nuts. And you can have that little fella go inside of the chest and close this chest up. It doesn't push the head up or anything, but who cares? And that little fella can also go in the canopy, or should I say can of peas of Jet Mobile. He comes with an array of screw covers, so you have those options, which is nice. You have the white plastic, the kind of like almost a glow in the dark looking, and then the red. And he comes with swap out posing hands for the smaller robot. They just peg in and then they'll swivel. They're nice poses though. I appreciate stuff like this and fully painted. He also comes with landing gear, like an additional set of landing gear. The wheels do roll and it's just sort of a flat plastic. To get those in, it's kind of a pain. You have to line these pegs up with these holes on his legs in jet mode. And then this goes into his nether regions and we'll get that first and then we'll try to line all this up. I'm not sure if the juice is 100% worth the squeeze on this, but that's how it works. So let's take a look at this guy. The head is on a hinged swivel, which is nice. It's my preferred way of doing business most of the time with Transformers. It gets you up to there, down to there, and the swivel. It looks stoic. The sculpt, once again, is beautiful. It's fully painted, the blue, the silver, the light blue, and the gold, and sculpted to the nines. Tremendous. We have the shoulders. It's basically a universal joint, so it comes out here at one hinge, but this, then it has a secondary hinge as well inside of the shoulder, and then a swivel, which will get you the more universal action. It does get a little ate up, moving it around this backpack piece, but 
like you should be able to get most of the poses that you want i haven't had any problem posing him and he's actually he's a pretty fun figure to pose except for one problem which i'll talk about at the uh towards the end of it we have a bicep swivel we have a elbow with this huge gap here in the forearm which is a bummer and then the wrist swivel and this is where you take them out to swap out the hands and then we have everything is painted gray white white gray all painted and looks beautiful and nice sculpt work same for the other side the chest we have this like same color it's like a blue gray gray it feels like and then the blue chest and then the white all painted no swivel you have a little bit maybe but not really and you know no ab crunch or anything kind of limited in that regard hips we have gold and then blue paint we have a universal basically on a disc that gets you all the way up and a good bit back and out to the side for the full van dam no issues thigh swivel single hinge knee that gets you 90 degrees i just push this foot in and it's kind of a pain to get out gold and then red paint down at the bottom i think i think that's red paint it's hard to tell and then the same here and you get a little bit of an ankle tilt up and down however no rocker and that makes the posing kind of problematic because you have a hard time getting him in anything outside of his kind of normal stance but his normal stance does look good and i mean you can get him in it i'll have you know stuff at the end showing you it just doesn't look uh believable you know because the foot never reaches the ground it's like he's got a he's got to go see a foot doctor because he's got issues there he is from the back pretty clean Size comparison wise, there he is next to X Transpots breakdown, and that'll hopefully give you some sort of an idea. It's a kind of a chuggish, ruggish size. All right, let's get him into the big fella, so to speak. We'll fold in the hands. It's a tight little joint there, but fold them in on both sides. And actually, while we're in the folding game, you can go ahead and fold the feet in as well. You want to kind of collapse the elbows up. It's kind of like combining combiner wars in them except it's from the side and then bring the shoulder down into the chest and kind of get it as flat against the body as possible and do that on both sides okay so we'll plug in the legs flip these little gold pieces up bend at the hips and then bend at the knees and then these two tabs will go into these two spaces in his chest and just kind of make it work and there you have it oh let's fold out the wings and then you simply take him and slide him down into the body and it snaps right in pretty great fit get his arms plugged in there and then to put the mask on flip the face up and come in at like a 45 degree angle and down and it's a little frustrating honestly but there it is i'll get them cleaned up we'll take a look at it all right so let's go over articulation we have the basically the same hinge swivel that we looked at with the smaller bot up is a little bit more limited down still looks good which is fine for a bot of this size who is he looking up at you know what i mean you do have the antenna that move about as you see fit we have a waist swivel and it is feels like it's on a ball peg but it might just be a hinge swivel because there's a rocker both at, from the chest into the abdomen and the abdomen into the pelvis that gets you a fairly significant ab crunch and back, which is nice. So you'll be able to get this guy really posed uh, quite dynamically. All right, for the shoulders, you do have a butterfly joint here. It hinges out and you have the swivel all the way around and you have i feel like you had more of an outward movement there move that flap and you should be able to get your arm out 90 degrees which is nice all right bicep swivel we have die cast parts for the joints double jointed elbow the die cast piece has some sculpted detail it looks like as well it may just be the way that the metal goes together but it is interesting nonetheless that gets you more than 90 degrees pretty much the full range the hands swivel and this piece does open up so you can kind of hinge it if you i don't think you're going to be able to cheat it then we have basically universals at each finger so you can get them up and down 
side to side, no problem. And then an additional hinge at the secondary and tertiary joints of the finger. So fully articulated. The thumb is on a ball peg into the palm of the hand. And then you have a secondary hinge and a tertiary hinge at the thumb. So everything there fully articulated. We also have everything pretty much fully painted and sculpted. No stone unturned, very, very sharp, very, very dynamic. No issues. Moving on to the hips, we'll get these flaps up and out of the way. It's a hinge here, I think it's a ball peg here. Universal joints for hips, get you out to the side. Not ratcheted, but pretty well toleranced. And forward on a ratchet, and this guy can be in your dance lineup at uh, Radio City Music Hall if those sorts of things ever open again. Same for the other side. We have a thigh swivel. We have a double jointed knee. It's ugly, but it's there and the knee is die cast. And then for the feet, we have an ankle tilt down, a toe tilt up. Mm, the slightest bit of a rocker, but it's not great. So that's a bit of a bummer. And then let me get you a view from the back. You know, clean as a whistle, as it should be. Size comparison wise, there he is next to my uh, Takara one. And you know, the Takara one's got the, the booties on and stuff. I think I'm gonna sell the Takara one, but they're about the same size. So if you're good with the size of the Takara, you'll be good with the size of this guy. He, I mean, I'm not getting this guy either just cause I, I've learned from having him that these characters don't mean anything to me. But this looks and feels so much better than this. Like night and day, it feels so much better than this. Just look at the sculpt. Look, I mean, everything just feels so much more serious with this guy. What are they doing? Anyway, there they are size-wise though. All right, so let's take the head off. Then we wanna get our chest piece out. So get it out. Take the legs forward. You need to take them around to the back and you need to split them because they need to fit around this little notch here. But if you want, you can use them for leverage to kind of get up. You need them basically in the reverse position and then bring them up. And then now they need to peg back in and peg back in together. And I will do the best I can, but there it goes. Then we'll get the wings sorted, bring them out to the side. This peg goes into that hole on both sides and it's just a matter of getting it lined up just adjust the arm to make it work on the bottom there's this fold out wing here and here and you can kind of have those however you want it then take your star saber put this around these two clips here go into these two notches on the sides of his head and close up the bottom and I'll clean them up. We'll take a look at it. So there is the kind of single jet mode. You know, it rolls. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty accurate. No issues. You know, like this is kind of the cheesy version of it, right? Like everybody wants to see the big jet. But I think this is pretty functional for what it's supposed to do. Ultimately, I think it works well. And there he is next to Tiger Tracks. So pretty much about the same size. Okay, to get him ready, pretty easy. Flip in this landing gear. Take the back ones out if you have those in. Flip these wings down in the rear and these wings up in the front. Collapse your hand into a fist, open up that port, slide the fist in and close it and go ahead and do that times two. Now flip up your flaps, flip the flaps, you know what I mean? The same ones you use to get the arm out on this side and then you also need to open up this one on that side in order to collapse this shoulder, which is kind of a pain because there is a slider here, but in order to utilize it, you gotta have it lined up just right. And then you can flip your flaps back down. Same on this side, flip your flap and do that times two and slide, slide, slide. Wait a minute, slide, hold on, come on. Oop. You gotta clear that notch is the trick there. 
take the legs and make them pigeon toed. Then rotate the knees back towards the front. Then you'll notice this flap here and you'll notice it while you're manipulating the figure because it does have a tendency to get pushed in as you're maneuvering it. But you want to rotate out at this joint in the knee and then back in at the lower joint to get that lined up. So out at the upper joint, in at the lower joint so that he's now making an awkward crab. Whoa, what's up crab dance? <laughs> How you doing? You ever seen your girl hit this move? Now we gotta get this boy's size 14 sorted. So bring down the foot. You wanna kinda collapse all of this stuff back and over. And then this entire foot slides up in there, but you want his shoe to kinda go underneath. There, boom. Same for this side, heel toe. Once again, there. This part gets a little tricky to show on camera. You got these side flaps here on the thigh. Flip, make sure they're flipped out. There's two notches here on the arm. I think you wanna use the lower one, whichever one will kind of push this arm forward to you a bit. And that should hopefully make a little bit more sense here in a second. Something just happened there. It didn't like that. So, oof, I had to fix that. Take the backpack, bring this down, flip these out. There's these panels here that flip out. Bring this down, this tab, all of this stuff lines up. So this tab goes into here, this one into there, that one into there. And I'm just gonna start and get to fiddling. This little flap on the thigh, I don't even think you're gonna need it because I think the backpack is gonna keep all of that, yeah, that's gonna keep all of that locked. I wouldn't even use those flaps on the thighs. It's a tight fit anyway, so this does the same job. I would probably just leave enough alone, or leave well enough alone, rather. And then the moment of truth is getting this thing in here, and I can tell you it's not easy. What you're using to connect it, you see these little clips here? There's one that hangs down here, and there's one that hangs down here. And they'll clip in to the side there. But the first trick is even to get it in there in the first place. And I have no idea exactly the best way to do it. Uh-oh, there we go. All right. Let's call it up here. Got one side in there. I'm just gonna keep finagling to try to maneuver it because there's no sense in wasting your time with it. But uh, let me see if I can't. Then you can take your gun and your head, make sure you fold the antenna forward. You can kind of hide the face. The head sits on that blue square there and your gun can tab in to whichever hole you'd like, so to speak. Yeah. I'll get it cleaned up, we'll take a look at it. You know, and there it is. These tabs, will t everything will kind of get a little tighter. I'm just being a little cautious because I'm pretty sure it's his personal copy and I don't want to cause any damage to it. It rolls. Um, it's a little awkward. I think that the Dakar one definitely pulls off the jet mode kind of better, you know, in general. Like, it looks unfinished. It doesn't look solid. It, the, the engineering is a little clunky and awkward to get to it. 
So it's not my favorite by far, but it does look the part and it is kind of huge and intimidating. I mean, just to give you an idea, there it is next to Tiger Tron. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. First of all, the sword is too tight, or should I say sword is too tight in all of the hands, especially the long handle. It's very scary. You have a lot of torque. It feels like you could snap it quite easily. Please use caution. The flaps in particular on the inner calf have a tendency to get pushed in as you're manipulating the figure. It's just a weird design and as a result, just kind of a frustrating experience when dealing with it. Not a deal breaker or anything, just sort of something that stands out as an unpleasant experience while manipulating the figure. Limited ankle rockers. That's not good. Not good for a figure like this that has so much articulation. Kind of a real bummer. I would have sacrificed one of those ab crunches for it any day of the week. Also, there's a lot of weight in the legs, but no ratchets in the joints of the Universal's outward movement for the hips. As a result, I do see them weakening over time. And as a matter of fact, I've seen this one already begin to weaken during my manipulation of it. Lastly, the engineering, it's clunky, it's awkward, it's clumsy, and it doesn't really pull off anything beautiful or inspiring as a result. Just sort of a whole lot of a mess to pull off something that's kind of mediocre at best. So those would be my negatives. Now my positives are plentiful as well. This thing is sculpted beautifully. It's painted beautifully. The materials are great. The die cast, the hardware, with the exception of that spot, and the hips is all fantastic. Everything is very smooth and polished. It has a very Bondi feel to it. Cleans up beautiful. The proportions are great. I think it looks way better in robot mode than the Takara one, and it's painted infinitely better. So if you're a fan of this character, I recommend you picking this up because it does look great, and it is a lot of fun to mess with. Like Just while I was posing him and coming up with different dynamic poses and sort of maneuvering him, I was like, man, I want to take a picture of him like this. I want to take a picture of him like this. So it's a lot of fun to mess with. It just has a few kind of clunky parts about it, but if this is in fact a new company, which I'm not entirely sold that it is, it's a very promising prospect as to where it could go. I would love to see them do more in the future. I know that they have the other half of this guy coming, but I would like to see something a little bit closer to what I'm interested in, but I'm happy for those that are into this stuff. Ultimately, a, re a recommend from me. Thanks to East Coast Toys, and thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.